God bless you. Welcome into the Gospel Music Jude Box. Once again, my friends, we're excited. Hey, going to be talking about, well, you know, some people say eldership doesn't work, but we're going to see what the Word of God has to say today. Amen, because my friends, it is truth. Yes, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, there is a necessity for biblical qualifications, and hey, he wrote it. <laughs> uh, men penned it under the divine anointing of God, led by the Holy Ghost. So guys, we're going to be talking about, well, yeah, the necessity for biblical qualifications. You know, because listen, as you're going to hear throughout the program, when we come to the subject of church elders, hey, and the Word of God has plenty to say. Uh, praise God. So we're going to be sharing that and sharing Scripture with you throughout the program, as well as giving you updates about upcoming uh, singings, revivals, uh, where we are going to be. Amen. So you want to keep a pencil and paper, or either simply go over to Facebook. Yeah, Bishop Eddie Cheney. Check us out. We try to keep updates over there going and uh, that'll kind of let you know if we're going to be close to your area. You can come out, be with us, meet us in person. Hey, love to have you pray for me, anoint me. We'd love to pray with you. Yes, the Word of God says pray ye one for another. We just simply tell you to come, yeah, and just obey God. Let go and let God have His way with you, my friends, because we definitely want you to know that there is liberty right here at Sons of Thunder Ministry and the Gospel Music Jude Box Radio Program. Praise God, we encourage you to obey God first and foremost in your life. Now, if you're listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we bring you good news. Today, right now, today, yeah, this moment, this hour, 
is the day of salvation. Right now, if you're alive, blood flowing through your veins, man, you're breathing the oxygen that God has given you because, listen, friend, he has a, a purpose and a plan for your life. All you got to do is come to that place and realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Reach out, reach up, take a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I Am. If you do that, you repent, turn from your sins, run into the arms of Jesus with that broken heart and contrite spirit, my friend, He will in no wise cast you out. You, right now, right there where you're at, yeah, you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. But it's your choice. But you must choose this day whom will you serve. We're praying for you. We're praying with you. Come on. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, friend, if you've been born again, we want to rejoice with the angels in heaven along with you. Let us know. Leave a comment in the chat room or hit us up over there on Facebook. Yep, Bishop Eddie Cheney. We'd love to hear from you. Or if there's anything we can do for you, if you're interested in having a, a uh, well, a house service, a, 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 a porch service, backyard tent revival, woo, or just assemble ourselves together in the breaking of the bread, the Word of God. Give us a call. We'd love to stop by and worship God with you. See if we can't get you right in there. God is awesome, isn't he? Just give us a call. You can give me a call. Amen. Anytime. If I'm awake, I'll answer it or leave a message. Praise God. You can call my cell phone for any information about the ministry or if you would like for us to drop by, me and my wife and some of the uh, brothers and sisters right here at Sons of Thunder Ministry. Sometimes they a few travel with me, and, but most of the time it's me and my wife. But anyhow, give me a call at one nine three one two four eight zero seven three zero. Hey, give me a call. We'll put it in on the calendar, and we'll stop by your house, eat a bologna sandwich, pray with you, discuss the Word of God, worship God t together, my friend, with you in spirit and truth. So we're looking forward to your call. It doesn't matter where God has told us to reach out to anywhere in the United States of America first, and not long, friends, we're going to be going into foreign ground, yep, overseas, because we're going to take the gospel Ooh, of Jesus Christ, the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, not only here in America, but around the world. So we're excited. Hey, like I said, if you want us to come worship God with you at your church or your backyard, your porch, your kitchen, it doesn't matter. Just give us a call. As long as two or three gather up, Ooh, who's in the midst? Praise God, Jesus. Amen. It's all about winning souls to the body of Christ and feeding the sheep. As a called pastor, uh, We've got to be about the Father's business. Amen. Praise God. All right, guys, I'm excited, so I hope you you be led of the, of the Lord. And if you'd like to meet us or if you have any questions concerning the ministry or any of the dates, where we're going to be, things like that, please feel free to give me a call, Bishop Eddie Cheney, at 1-931-248-0730. Once again, 1-931-248-0730. The number, one nine three one two four eight zero seven three zero we'd love to get to meet you love to pray with you uh, if you need prayer please feel free to drop off a prayer request or you can call our testimony line yes you can call and drop off a prayer request a testimony a praise report or, or just just shout howdy Maybe you've got a Bible question. Hey, you can drop it off at our pre-recorded uh, testimony line by dialing 1-931-229-0768. And uh, you get three minutes. Now, you can call as many times as you need to or that you would like to and share as many testimonies. Yes, telling the goodness of God and Ooh, praise God, letting the world know that he's not dead, he's alive, and actively working in the lives of his people. We play those on our radio program right here, right now, what you're listening to, the Gospel Music Jukebox. We share those testimony calls, prayer requests, Bible questions, and we just uh, just simply encourage you to call one 229 and just obey God. 
Amen. Hey, do that. You'll be blessed. The listeners will be blessed. And we here at the Gospel Music Jukebox will be blessed. We love you. I hope that's helped you with any questions you might have at the beginning of the program. Like I said, throughout this program, we're going to be sharing some updates, some dates and times of where we're going to be or some of our evangelists are going to be from Sons of Thunder Ministry. So if you're in the area and you want to jump out and be a part, you can, my friend. Amen. We want to invite you. Yes, you. Come. Be a part. Just simply let go and let God have his way with you. Amen. We're going to be talking about that throughout the program along with discussing, uh, well, the necessity of biblical qualifications and uh, why some people say, well, eldership just doesn't work. You know, right, right here, let me let you know. I want to respond to that because you're right. How can it work when we appoint uh, spiritual, uh, spiritually unfit, unqualified uh, elders? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how can it work if, if we're putting the wrong people in the wrong place? Listen, it can't work if we don't follow God's manual for leadership. And the first point is elders must be biblically qualified for eldership. Yeah to work in the ministry. Hang around, watch what God does. Amen, right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox as we talk about the necessity of biblical qualifications. Hey, we'll be right back. Give this a listen and be blessed, my friends, and know that we love you. The Lord loves you and we love you too. Be blessed in Hello, Jesus' Brother name. Bishop Eddie Cheney, we love you and we're praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho and... Uh, Thanks so much for having this testimony line that we can make our calls in on. And uh, I'd like to encourage people, please call 1-931-229-0768, 1-931-229-0768, and share your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney, I know the Lord has told me that, you know, these calls, the programs, everything we do help people, and you don't know who's going to hear one of these calls, and you know, need an inspiration or need to hear about sin or need prayed for for healing and they're going to get healed and all these different calls that we make in. You know, boy, glory to God, I know that they help people. And I'll be calling in as, as many calls as I can throughout the day. We appreciate the prayers for all of us here and uh, proclaiming total healing in my mom's heart. I'm taking care of her. My dad passed away and we're taking care of my sister Ann who has schizophrenia and a big weight problem, my grandma Yomi, who's 96, and uh, we appreciate the prayers for all of us, and for the visas, Fred and Isabel, my fiance Edna, we're trying to get her over here, I know, I know you've been praying for us, and we really appreciate the prayers, God is helping us, he's answering those prayers, and I'm telling you that we're all, we've been overcoming with all of our prayers and testimonies, and everything that we're sharing, that um, God's been helping us overcome, and I'm telling you that the word of our testimony is powerful, and all these calls we make in, and the people that we're helping and preaching to it helps everything we do for the Lord helps us. So remember, we're supposed to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And we'd like to encourage you to call in and share your testimony so these calls can go on the CD and can encourage CDs and can our programs and can encourage our brothers and sisters and can encourage people out there and can help someone turn their heart and life over to Jesus. There's you know, all the different messages, anything that's preached, someone out there needs to hear it. And uh, maybe just what they need to encourage them and help them to overcome and to help them turn their hearts and lives over to Jesus. And I can tell you that I was in the pornography, cursing, foul language, had so many sins in my life, didn't think I could ever overcome. But I confess Jesus is Lord, was baptized in the lake, turned my heart and life over to Jesus. He came into my heart and life and the Holy Spirit, and they got those sins out. Now I don't have to sit there and watch pornography anymore. Instead, I can do what I'm doing right now and help get the good news of Jesus out to a lost, dying, and hurting world. And I can help the people in prisons and the orphans and different people and can show the love of Jesus to others instead of sitting there sinning. And I praise and thank and glorify God. I love Jesus so much. I love God so much. Please turn your heart and life over to Jesus if you have it. Jesus will get the sin out of your life. He'll heal you from sicknesses and diseases. He'll deliver you from trials and challenges. I'm telling you, God is good, and Jesus loves you. Please turn your heart and life over to Jesus. God bless all. Jesus, 
Praise God. All you got to do is call him up and tell him what you want. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys, going to talk a little bit about the necessity for biblical qualifications. I mean, man, look at the shape that some of these uh, so-called denominational and buildings called a church, just look at the shape they're in. Some of them are becoming country clubs. Some of them are becoming, well, party places bringing the things of the world into the place of worship. And we're supposed to be a separated people, aren't we? <laughs> That's the way I read it. Anyhow, hey, I, you know, when you think about it, the Lord... Uh, this is a, a very, um, well, of great importance to the Lord, or he wouldn't have had the men of God write it in his word, the Bible. Yeah. So think about it. How important is it? It's pretty important. And it's where I believe some of today's traditional uh, worship places have missed the boat or missed the, the proper placing of elders. You see, God, he placed a, a standard for those in pastoral oversight. Now, listen, not just anyone can be a, an elder or a pastor. You know, listen, we don't have the right to appoint uh, men as elders because they are, well, friends or because you want to honor a person for perfect attendance, uh, nor should you place a rich uh, person uh, on the eldership, just because they have power and influence, they, in other words, they threaten us a lot when we're working in ministry about, well, I'll, I'll take my toy and go home, you know, I'll take my money and quit, you know, <laughs> uh, they try to use their money to shift uh, power, yeah, they play politics, but you shouldn't give them a position just because they, they got money and helping you meet some needs, no, God will give you if one leaves you by you doing what's right and you're trying to build a ministry or run a ministry that God has set you over or has placed you in authority, friends, be led of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. As we read the Word of God, we apply it to our lives. And if one leaves and pouts and does those things, we try to encourage them to come back, not for their money, but because we want them 
to continue to receive their spiritual gifts and blessings from God. We want them to grow. We don't want no one to miss heaven and make hell their home. And usually if somebody leaves over bitterness or angry over money, they usually some sin involved in it. Yeah, they, 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 mm, you know, they are. But anyway, I, I want to suggest right now just three important reasons for the necessity of biblical qualifications. You know, one of them just right off the top of my head would be to protect the church, the body of Christ. Now I'm not talking about a building here. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ from unfit men in leadership. This this is why it's, it, it's important that we look at the necessity of the biblical qualifications. You know, and we're going to be talking about that throughout the program. The other would be to help improve the elders' moral and uh, spiritual characters. Yeah, you've got some elders around you that uh, not you're not utilizing the wisdom that God's placing around you, and uh, so think about that. You know, so we'll be talking about that. My third um, one would be to help improve the elders' shepherding skills. Hmm, powerful. There are some young pastors that are called right there around you and in the ministry that you're working with right now. So it's important that we begin to teach and talk about, yeah, the necessity for biblical qualifications. So as we jump into that, I'd ask you to continue to pray for us throughout the program and know that we are praying for you, my friends, those of you that are born again, bathed in the blood, those of you today that have made the decision to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow after Jesus. We pray that God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. You know, the uh, as you think about an example, you know, the qualifications protect the church from a, well, let's say a hot-tempered man, a fighter, uh, a dominating personality, a greedy man, immoral, uh, unfaithful man, an uh, immature man, a man with poor judgment, uh, an undiscipleship um, man, a man with unfit testimony in the community. Yeah, in other words, don't have a good report. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about. That's just one example of why it's so important to, to protect the church. I'm talking about the body of Christ, not a building, not a denomination. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ. It's important that we, those of us that have callings in our lives, whether you're an evangelist, a, a prophet, a, 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 a teacher, a, a pastor, um, we want you to know that it is important to stand upon the Word of God. And we think the listeners should know that we stand upon the Word of God as we apply the Word of God to our lives each day. So it is important to protect the church, the body of Christ, from unfit men in leadership. That's why we got to pray and be led of the Holy Ghost. we got to pray and we got to apply. Pray and apply the Word of God. Do you get it yet? I believe you do. Hey, we'll be right back as we jump more detailed into the discussion of the oh, excuse me, of the necessity for biblical qualifications. We'll be right back. Be blessed in Jesus' name. can take a heart that's broken, make it over again, but I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's in sick, make it white at the snow. i 
can't walk on these waters or come the troubled sea. But I know a man who can. I can't cause blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again. Praise God. You know, as we dive deeper into the discussing this morning, uh, talking about the necessity for biblical qualifications, you know, think about this. You certainly wouldn't just let anyone run your business or your family finances or even uh, babysit your children without knowing the person's moral character, would you? So so why should it be any different in God's house? Yeah, in the gathering up of the body of Christ. Hmm? Nothing listen, nothing is more damaging to to the the body of Christ than an unfit, unqualified um, elders. Yeah, an unfit elder is is a source of years of endless trouble, my friends. Listen, these qualifications we're going to be talking about can help the local body right there that you're connected to, stop an unfit man from becoming an elder or, or remove an unfit man from the eldership, the role of leader there, until repentance. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So so listen, you got to know that no one has the right to force himself on the Lord's people as a leader. You know, so the, the more we study these qualifications, uh, the more we will be impressed with the wisdom of these particular uh, the qualifications. I want listen. I'm I'm wanting to encourage you, uh, uh, as an elder myself, to continue to meditate and reflect on these and pray. Listen, there is much to learn from a from deep reflection of of the verses we're going to be talking about and sharing with you. They will help you to keep improving. Well, you know, in, in your character and I and to identify your weaknesses that that. We all need to work on. Listen, we all can improve ourselves, right? We can improve our self-control, our devotion, our uh, parenting skills, our husband skills, our 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 balance uh, uh, in judgment. I mean, the more uh, Christ-like your character, hey, the better example you will be to others. You see, these character qualifications set up a standard for us to keep. Yeah, we got to keep aiming. At throughout our life, my friends. So if if we uh, meditate deeply and pray and spend time in the Word of God on the qualifications, listen, they will show show us how to improve our shepherding skills with people and think of um, uh, qualities like you know not quick tempered, gentle, uh, hospital hospitality, uh, not uh, you know full of brawl or quarrelsome, able to give instructions and sound doctrine, love. Yes, love of of you know of good and willing love, willing to shepherd. You see, willing to say, Lord, I'll do what you have me do. You know, run into it with acceptance and love. See, the more you improve these qualities in your life, all of us, yeah, 
you I everyone that's born again hey the if you're called into ministry well if you'll become that doer of the word of god and apply it as you read it and pray your way yeah through yeah you the better shepherd you will be. We we can all improve on our skills with people and our family management, my friends. So as we get ready to jump into the discussion right here, right now, the biblical qualifications for our pastoral elders, I want you to think about, uh, as we think about a starting point, uh, you know, so... I want you, if you would, to go over to the book of Acts, chapter 20, and look at verse 28. Pray, pay real careful attention uh, to ourselves and to all the flock in which the, the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. In other words, to care for the church of, of God. It's Christ is the head, and we're talking about the body of Christ as, as the church, not, not a building. So I want you to look at Acts chapter 20 there, verse 28, as you begin to think about the biblical qualifications for a pastor or elders uh, in the work of your ministry. You know, and then I want you to really look at 1 Timothy there. If you jump in there at 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1, you know, where he's talking about the the. The saying is this saying is trustworthy. If any uh, seek the office of, of a bishop or an overseer, he desires a noble task or a noble office. So you want to? There's got to be a desire. You got to seek. I mean, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, uh, exercising oversight, not under complacin, but willingly, as as God would have you to do, my friend. Not for shameful gain. You know, but 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 eagerly be ready. Look in First Peter chapter five verse two, and uh, if if you're one to follow along and get in there, then the word of God is going to speak to you. So ask God to write His word upon the tablet of your heart. Once again, I want to give you these three verses, uh, books, verse, and chapter here as we're talking about an elder, we're talking about pastors, we're talking about the right people in the right position. Amen. So look in Acts 20, verse 28. Look in 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Also look at 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 2. I mean, when you really get down to it and you think about it, the first requirement is the will and the call of God, the Holy Ghost in your life. I mean, when you... Uh, Really think about it, Paul and the first Christians applauded the desire for eldership by, well, creating a, a popular Christi Christian saying. Yeah, if any man desires the office of an overseer or bishop, he desires a, a good thing or a noble task or a noble thing. And uh, Peter, too, in, in insisted that an elder shepherd the flock willingly and eagerly. So you want to get in there, or you're going to miss what we're talking about. Because a true desire to lead the family of God is always a spirit-generated desire. And Paul reminded the, the Ephesian elders that it was the Holy Ghost himself, not the, the church or the apostles, who placed them as overseers Yeah, in the church throughout the body of Christ to shepherd the flock of God. You want to look at Acts chapter 20, verse 28 again. Jump in there. The Spirit uh, planted the, the pastoral desires in their hearts. You see, so you really want to jump into the Word of God to understand what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Don't take my word for it. Get in there and just read, pray, fast, and seek the face of God. Amen. We'll be right back, my friends. Give this a listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Oh, 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 oh,
Praise God. Hey, guys, you know, I want you to really remember that it's not man's will that matters, but it's God's will and, and, and uh, arrangement. It's God's will and arrangement. So the, the only men who qualify for eldership are those who the Holy Ghost has given the motivation and the gifts for the task, my friend. This is one reason they are called God's stewards. Look over there in Titus 1, I, I believe it's, uh, yeah, Chapter 1, verse 7. And, uh, you know, just showing you some illustrations of desire. You know, think about it a minute. Because desire uh, is like, let's say, a missionary who, who does, uh, how you might be thinking, well, you know, what does that have to do with it? Well, think about this. How does a person become a missionary? Um, it, it, you know, just that alone. Think about it. It begins with a desire to spread the gospel worldwide. Yeah, where where did that desire come from? <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But now desire is not enough because sometimes desire for eldership may actually be a false desire. You got to remember the enemies out there throwing things too, my friends. Yeah, deception uh, of the heart. Uh, of the result of a dominating personality who false desires and unfit men, the Spirit gives us particular um, objective qualifications to test that desire uh, of the candidates. Listen, if Paul was with us, these are the qualifications he would look for in a potential elder. And it's going to come right here from the Word of God. The, the, these object spiritual qualifications can be divided, I believe. Let me make sure. I want to make sure here because I'm working without notes today. I've been on the road, and I'm, I'm just being led of the Lord as I jot down a few things as I'm going along. So please pray for me. Hey, Amen. Uh, but I believe we're going to try our best to divide it into about nine categories. You know, today, I don't know if we'll get them all in this program, but anyway, we're going to give that a shot. So you want to 
continue to follow along, jump in where you can, because a uh, good uh, reputation is one of them, uh, above reproach. You know, look there in First Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 2, and Titus 1, chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, respectable, you know, you, you can talk about there in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, um, well thought of by others concerning the work of God or the will of God. In other words, that tree being known by the fruit that it bears is, are they doers of the word of God? Um, you know, so I want you to think about that for just a few moments as we go over here and check out the testimony line and, uh, share another awesome testimony with you. Hey, if you want to call the testimony line, be a part of the Gospel Music Jukebox radio program, help us fill these airways with the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, pick up the phone, dial 1-931-229-0768. You get three minutes, leave your testimony, leave a, a prayer request, leave a Bible question, hey, or just shout howdy. We'd sure enough love to hear from you, my friends. Be blessed, and we'll be right back. God bless. Hello, Brother Bishop, Patty Cheney. We love you, and we're praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd, London, and Idaho. They want to know, why are we so intense about this Jesus stuff? Why are we so intense about being watchmen, about saying that people have to do the will of God, that people need to get the homosexuality, drug use, drunkenness, pornography, and sit on their wife. they got to stop fornicating and living with their boyfriends and girlfriends before marriage and living in sin. Why are we so serious? But we're called to be watchmen in the book of Ezekiel. If we don't want to get sin, people go to hell, we can go to hell also. And I have a little bit of a grasp about how bad it would be to stand before the Lord and not have been a doer of the word and being a worker of iniquity and cast out into hell. Hell is forever. You're going to burn there forever in the eternal fire. You can read about it at the ending of Revelation, nothing impure, or the shameful, or deceitful, or sexually immoral. Liars will go through the gates into the city of the lake, and the fiery, is the place of the fiery lake of burning soul, for it's horrible to go to hell. And people just don't realize how bad hell's going to be. This is scary, and they don't know what it's going to be like to stand before the Lord and be cast out. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, many, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, and your name drive out demons, we'll run many miracles, and I'll tell them plainly, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See, many people are believing in Jesus, but they're not doing the will of God, and they're not getting sent out of their life, and they're going to be called workers of iniquity and cast into hell, even though they believe in Jesus. And thought they were saved. It's horrible. This is over Luke 13, the narrow door. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way, his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, the Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Only a few people, are only a few going to be saved? He said, we make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, he'll stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us, but he'll answer, I don't know you or where you came from. And he will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets, but he'll reply, I don't know you or where you come from, away from me, you workers of iniquity. They'll be weeping and gnashing your teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, with all the prophets of the kingdom of God, but you yourself thrown out. So many people aren't making every effort. They're keeping sin in their life. They're not doing the will of God. And I have a little bit of a glimpse of what it's going to be like for millions and millions of people that go to church on Sundays but aren't doers of the word and that live in sin as they're cast out when they thought they believed in Jesus and they're going to go to heaven. They're sleeping and gnashing their teeth. The people weep, they gnash their teeth because they thought they were saved but they were workers of iniquity and they go to hell and they gnash their teeth and they're thrown into hell. It's a horrible scene. Please truly repent and get sin out of your life. Don't play with sin. And please become doers of the word and put Jesus' teachings into practice. You don't want to go to hell. Just don't know how I'm gonna make it 
sustain me Oh, could this be the day I cried Oh, but here comes Jesus to my rescue Walking on the water to my sinking boat Yes, I can make it because I've got Jesus He's the anchor Boyd London in Idaho, Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney, we love you and we're praying for you. We have to take the role of being a watchman very seriously. This is a post I just posted over on my Facebook page and in our group over there, Inspire, Encourage, and Preach the Word. By the way, I've been able to share the programs that are done over in the group I started, Inspire, Encourage, and Preach the Word. There's like 2,200 people in there, and we share them in the God Answers Prayers group that's run by uh, Natty over there. So there's like 42,000 people in there, and we preach the Word of God in those groups also. I've been calling in, trying to help my friends who are living in fornication with their boyfriends and girlfriends before marriage, homosexuality, pornography, drug use, drunkenness, and sins. And why am I so serious? Let's look at some scriptures. Ezekiel 33, verse 7. Son of man, I've made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. You do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways. That work of wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you will yourself be saved. See, if we don't warn people that are living with fortification, and before their boy, with their boyfriends and girlfriends, before marriage, and homosexuality, drug use, drug use, pornography, and the sins, and they die, and we don't warn them, and they go to hell, we can go to hell also, it says. Listen to this, Ephesians chapter 5, walk in love. Therefore, the imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornification and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named, not even named among you as is fitting for the saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jettisting, which are not fitting, but rather the giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. If you're doing these sins, you do not have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you of empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partners with them. See, the world saying, and we go to the churches, if the homosexuality doesn't matter, living with your boyfriend and girlfriend doesn't matter, pornography doesn't matter, and you know, God loves all, Jesus loves all, it's not the truth. If you're living in fortification of these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will split hell wide open. You've got to stop living with your boyfriends and girlfriends before marriage and fornication. Fornication, you've got to cut the porn out, you've got to cut the homosexuality out, the drug use, the drunkenness, these sins shouldn't be in your life. Let Jesus help you repent. I'm trying to be a watchman and warn you. We're called to be watchmen. Please, let Jesus help you repent. Get the sin out of your life. Get your sin out of your life. Get the sin out of your life. God bless all. Come see a man 
forgiven All of my sins have been forgiven He's the only hope for living Come see a man Named Jesus Christ Oh, come see a man God. We're talking about, well, some people say eldership just doesn't work, you know, and and I I had to respond. You know, I told them, well, you know, listen, you're right. How can it work when we appoint spiritually unfit, unqualified elders? I mean, you know, it, it can't work if we don't follow God's manual for eldership. So the necessity for biblical qualifications, well, they're pretty important hey man they're in the word of god and we need to be teaching it we need to be sharing it with the body of christ hey man so uh, i know people get very uh, uncomfortable talking about it they get very uneasy but it's still the truth uh, throughout the word of god you know i want you to think about as we talk about some biblical qualifications you know look think about sober-minded there in First Timothy chapter three verse two, you want to read that? Hey, self-controlled. You know, you need to look in Titus one verse eight. Listen, not greedy for gain. You know, Titus one verse seven. Not quick-tempered. Titus chapter one verse seven. Not uh, uh, quarrelsome. Not arguing. You know what I'm saying? Look, look in First Timothy chapter three verse three, and not a drunkard. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. Disciplined. Think about it. Disciplined. You know, boy, we have a hard time getting people discipled because nobody wants to sit under nobody. But they're not looking at who's qualified for them to sit under. They're not looking at the fruit, are they? They're placing people because of privileges. That's what people's doing. That's what's going on throughout a lot of these false denominations and false places of worship where it's just a country club and just a clique and they make up their own rules and uh, they change them whenever they want to. They don't stay on a biblical. Just go check out your your code of conduct or your um, uh, uh, faith statement at the ministry you're involved in and see if it can be revised, changed. Can they add to it, take away? It's supposed to be built out of the Word of God and it should be settled from the beginning to the end, shouldn't it? I mean, why would you need to you know, think about it. But anyway, just sharing scripture with you today as we talk about these um, situations that's going out and what's going on around the world. There is a false Christ being taught. There is a a um, antichrist spirit that is among the world. He, he's out there. The devil's real. And if you don't believe that, you're already in trouble. 
You know what I'm saying? Because when you get into the conversation, well, is it you know is it necessary to worry about the biblical qualifications for the pastor or you know positions in the in the body of Christ? Yes, it is. It's very important the necessity for biblical qualifications, and we if we're going to live by the Word of God, we apply the Word of God. Then that is. That's it. There's nothing else to go by. There's no other manual, no other guide. We abide by what thus saith the Lord. And then we stand upon the word of God as we apply it to our lives. That's very simple. So with that being said, guys, amen. I I can only do about an hour this morning. I see I'm about out of time. Uh, I'm real busy today, so keep praying for us. But I hope that this has stirred the gift within you that would cause you to realize how important it is that we read and study and pray because we need to be able to know the tree by the fruit that it bears. But if we don't know the word of God, then we don't know what fruit we're looking for. And as people uh, heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears, just justifying their sins, they feel good. But when sin is done, my friend, it brings forth death. And I don't want I don't want you to miss heaven. I want you to make heaven your home, along with many others around this world that are preaching the truth, that are sharing the truth, that are trying to get people, you know, off of the lie of the world. You cannot hold on to the world with one hand and God with the other. It won't work. You can't serve two masters. You must choose whom will you serve. And, uh, you know, so that, that that's what we're doing here at the Gospel Music Jukebox Radio Program. We're trying to encourage people to get into the Word of God, to obey God, to apply the Word of God in their lives. Well, just simply be doers of the Word of God, not hearers only. Amen. <laughs> hey, good to see Sister Shirley Collins stop by. God bless, sis. Be sure if you see your brother today, give him a hug for old Bishop. Tell him I love him. Can't wait to get back up there and uh, be with the brother. We're praying for him. Uh, we believe God's going to bring him forth out of this situation, for we are the healed of God. And I believe Brother James is like myself. He's a winner either way. Honey, whether he goes or whether he stays, he's a man on fire for God, sold out to the woo. Praise God. I'm telling you, deny yourselves today, people. Pick up your cross. And follow out of Jesus. And man, you'll know what me and Brother James is talking about. When you're sold out to God, it doesn't matter. All we want done in our lives is the will of God. Amen. So praise God. Just let him know, Sister Shirley, we love him. We continue uh, in prayer for him. I know he's continually praying for us. And we understand all about internet trouble. We have a lot of it right here in Crossville, Tennessee. (laughs) Amen. But thank you for stopping by. We got a few more things. Uh, I can't do a full program today because I'm a lot of stuff going on. We're preparing for the 16th. Oh, we'll be back on tonight at 7 p.m. with regular scheduled programming. And I may get to finish this topic up tonight. Amen. But um, anyway, we're excited because God is moving not only here in America, but around the world. I believe we are in the end days. Do you not? I do. I believe in a moment, a blink, a twinkling of an eye. Honey, this could all be fulfilled and be over. Are you ready? Are you ready? Will you hear Jesus say, Enter in, or will you hear him say, depart from me? You see, you know where you stand with God today, listener. Listen, it's not by accident that you stopped by and checked out this radio program or picked up that CD or turned that radio dial. No, it's by heavenly divine appointment because God does have a purpose and a plan for your life. You see, God loves you that he sent his Yeah, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What are you going to do with Jesus? Now, if if you're following along the program, as we're talking about the biblical qualifications of elders and pastors, and I want to give you these, if you would, read Titus, T-I-T-U-S, chapter 1, read verse 5 through 9. And then go over and read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. One more. I want to drop off with you before I say goodbye here just in a moment. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. If you would, I'm going to 
I'm going to try to share those if I can get all this printed out over here in the chat room for those that stop by and check out the archive. Amen. So let's see if we can get that up there. Uh, the biblical qualification for pastor, eldership. Okay, I'll share that this morning. All right. I've, it worked. Praise God. As I'm getting better at one finger typing. You guys would laugh at me, man. I mean, I, my pointing finger is my typing finger. I cannot multitask on those keyboards. Can't do it. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to say thank you for stopping by. I want to thank you for utilizing our testimony line. Those of you that call in, oh, we just thank you so, so very much for just simply obeying the Lord and sharing, whether it be a scripture, a song, a Bible question, or a testimony, a prayer request. Please just pick up the phone and dial one nine three one. 229-0768 and just simply obey God. Just simply obey the Lord. We love you. We're going to say bye and uh, we'll see you next time right here tonight, Lord willing, at 7 p.m. Central Time right here at the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, tell somebody what's going on. Bring somebody with you uh, and enjoy the presence of your friends, company, or your family, uh, co-workers, neighbors, let them know that God's not dead. He's alive and working actively in the lives of his children. Amen. So praise God. That's uh, the best way I know to encourage you is just simply tell you, my friends, obey God. We'll try to finish up the topic of, uh, you know, um, some people say eldership doesn't work. Well, it does, but we must do it biblically, you know. So I respond, you're right. If, if it's not working for you and your ministry, I mean, how can it work, you know, when people appoint spiritually unfit, unqualified people in positions? It, it can't work if we don't follow God's manual for, for these positions to be filled or for eldership uh, in charge of and put over to watch over God's flock. So think about it. Jump into the Word. We tried to share some Scripture with you to get you stirred in this, and hopefully you'll realize how important it is. I got a simple saying I want to share with you. If you can't back up what you're doing and why you've done it with the Word of God, if I was you, I wouldn't do it. Bottom line, be a doer of the Word of God. May God continue to bless you, my friends, and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. Lord's of will, and we'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hey, share the program if you can. You get to if you don't to. We love you. We'll see you next time right here. I look back over my life And I think things over Well, I can truly say That I've been blessed I've got a testimony Well, as I look back over my life And I think things over Well, I can truly say That I've been blessed I've See my way through, but the Lord, He made a way. Right now I'm free, and I've got the victory. I've got a testimony. Well, as I look back over my life, and I think things over, well, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. Tell somebody I got a testimony Well, the Lord has been good to I me I got a testimony I've got a testimony I got a testimony I've got to tell somebody I got a testimony Well, the Lord has been good to me I got a testimony Well, I got a testimony I got a testimony I got a testimony I got a testimony Well, as I look 
Christ of God. 